Hey everybody, Ed Holmwood, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel. I hope everyone's doing well today. Look at this, I've got the world famous Hyphaman Sandara headphones. Sit back, relax, we're gonna talk about these planar magnetic open back headphones. Warm tubes glow like even sun. Memories return one by one. Echoes of the music's fun. Magic sounds have just begun. So what is the Hyphaman Sandara? Well, it is an open back planar magnetic headphone. It's been around for a few years. This was revised, I think, a couple of years ago. Um, a lot of reviews out on this. Very popular headphone, very highly regarded, and rightfully so. Um, really nice piece, good specifications, 6 hertz to 75,000 on the frequency response, 94 dB sensitive, and it is uh, 37 ohms. So it's not a really challenging thing to drive. Not the most efficient in the world, but not really challenging. Um, lightweight, nice construction. It's about 372 grams, so less than a pound. Anodized aluminum frame with spring steel headband. Good lightweight. But, you know, I think these are plastic grills, but the ring around it is metallic, so it's very feels very robust. It might look at or feel at first glance like it's thin metal, but man alive, is it, it is really well built. Now, the one thing is there's no articulation, but that didn't seem to bother me. Clamping force was good. The ear pads are great. They have this nice soft knit material where it touches your skin and on the inside and on the inside of the headphone itself with a pleather outside. Really nice, very nice, well constructed. I found them to be very comfortable. I could wear them for a long period of time. My inner ear just only barely on occasion touched the inside of the headphone itself. So really nice, comfortable, uh, good for long listening sessions. Um, but one complaint, the cable. Now they're, like I said, at $299 right now at the beginning of November, 2024. I think the original price was $499. <clears throat> at that price, you should get a balanced cable, not a 3.5 millimeter with a quarter inch adapter. So that's a gripe. The 3.5 millimeter plugs that go into the ear cups themselves, on there somewhere, I swear to God, it's embossed right and left, but it is next to impossible to see unless you got a magnifying glass and a 10,000 10, candle power flashlight, you might be able to see it. <clears throat> Plus another issue, this is microphonic. Not bad, but it is microphonic. So I would upgrade the cable. That would be my choice. So good comfort, good build quality from the headphone standpoint, I think. Well worth it. Well worth the two ninety nine. How did I test it? Well, I used the Hyphaman EF four hundred Himalaya Ladder Deck headphone amp. Really nice piece. I did review this already. I, amazing DAC. Um, and I also used this Barcos Gemini headphone amp that's got a twelve BH seven tube in it. And I'll explain why in a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm getting a little bit of a cold. So I found it to be really comfortable. I found it to be very pleasant to listen to. So the recordings I used were, I used this recording from Bill Withers. It's a compilation, it's greatest hits called Lean On Me. And it's got all the big hits on it. Ain't No Sunshine, you know, uh, Kissing My Love, um, you know, uh, Just the Two of Us, a compilation, great compilation with Grover Washington Jr. Really good. His voice is textured and nuanced and he's got a great soulful voice. I would imagine that maybe coming up, he'd have been a gospel singer. It's good power in his voice. He's got a really good authoritative voice great just really good and soulful and fun to listen to and of course i know all the words to all the songs so there's a nostalgic factor for for me with it but this did a really good job of rendering his voice without any question and it was a really most of these are recorded in the early to mid 70s they were very good recordings at the, for their time they still sound good even though compilation sometimes can be remastered and mixed around and messed up. This is actually a good one, sounded really good and was very rewarding to listen to. Now you guys all know, I love that goofy ambient electronic stuff. So I use this recording from carbon-based life forms called Seeker. And this is that weird, you know, very atmospheric, very soundscapey, sweeping, swirling around kind of stuff. And in your head on headphones, when I listen to headphones, I'm not looking for imaging like I look for with speakers. I'm not really concerned about stage depth, height, width, whatever, lock solid center, because everything's occurring inside your brain. What I like is when stuff starts swimming around and it's like, oh, over there, over here. You know, that is what I really enjoy about headphones. And this, this uh, Seeker album really does a great job of it. Low bass, really good low bass. And these do a good job with bass. Good, just really good drive and good pace and just a lot of fun to listen to and very cinematic and again, 
kind of swirls around inside your brain. And, you know, I guess the old hippie in me likes that. So carbon-based life form seekers. Now to really dive in and find the detail and really kind of see what kind of resolution these headphones have. I use this recording from Nemi Jarvi and the Bergen Philharmonic, Sensions Cello Concerto Number no. 1 um, in, a, in a, a minor and the Cello Concerto Number no. 2 in D major or D minor. Excellent. And of course, it's Carnival of the Animals and then African Wedding Cake, which kind of are tacked onto the record. So this was recorded at the Grigshallen in Bergen, Norway. Now, Grigshallen, named after Edvard Grieg, the famous Scandinavian composer, is an outstandingly acoustically wonderful place. Recordings done there, I have always found to be just amazing for their acoustics. It has a great sense of room. And in this recording, it's a really well done recording from 2016. Just an absolutely wonderful recording. You get a, in your head, you get a good sense of the space and the room and everything else. I just found it to be super recording or super rewarding to listen to. Um, and I love violin or cello concertos. I'm a big Yo Yo Ma fan, although it's not Yo Yo Ma in this. Um, and the, the um, concerto number one is probably his most famous. It was composed in 1872. And it's really kind of a most. Concertos are three movement pieces. This is not, it's like a single movement, but there's three distinct stages to it, three distinct parts of it. And there is, a, the cello comes out very aggressively and kind of very boldly in the beginning. Um, and it kind of sets the tone. It's, this is a very emotional, very technically demanding uh, piece to play for the cellist and the orchestra. So it's a lot of, you know, there's some unconventional structures to it. It's really thrilling to listen to. It's very engaging. It's kind of not that classical traditional sound. It's a lot of fun and it's very energetic and it's really, really fun. And, and it's real popular with audiences. I love it. And with cellists, they, you know, they get to show off their chops. Now, concert, the cello concerto number two in D minor, this is not as widely performed. This was recorded later in his career in 1902. He was kind of at the top of his game. He was very well known at this point. Um, as I said, this is not as widely performed because technically it's really, really challenging. There's a tremendous amount of interplay between the cellist and the orchestra and your timings have to be really, really good. So I would imagine that it requires excellent skill from the conductor because the conductor is setting the pace and the timing for everyone performing, and he's got to be right on his mark. And I also think it would take an awful lot of rehearsal time to make sure everybody knows when they need to come in and when they need to go out and get all the timings right. But when it's done properly like this recording, it is engaging. It is wonderful. And the, the Sundar has brought me into that recording very well. The space was excellent. The tone of all of the, the strings, especially the concerto, was really well reproduced. I really enjoyed it. Now, Carnival of the Animals is kind of a tacked on piece like African Wedding Cake. It's a whimsical piece. Sancien's never intended to have it published or performed. Uh, and I don't think it ever was during his lifetime, although Swan, I think, was published and performed. But it's kind of a whimsical piece. He's making fun of animals like the elephant and the tortoise and so forth and so on. His fear was if it got performed publicly, that people would stop taking him seriously as a composer. So it is a fun, whimsical piece. It's engaging. It's lighthearted. It's very, very kind of whipped creamy, sort of on top of a you know, just whipped creamy, light, fluffy, airy, a lot of fun, a lot of fun to listen to. And the Sundars did a great job. So I think on the low end, especially with carbon-based life forms, their base is very, very good all the way down to the lowest area. Now, these are all synthesizer based, so there's not a lot of articulation or a lot, not a lot of <clears throat> detail in the base. It's just kind of base, but they did a really good job. And I think they're really very neutral and very fast and good uh, rhythmic pace in that base area up to probably... I don't know, the upper mid bass, lower mid range area, 600, 800 hertz right in there. Um, good pace, well, good dynamics, very good dynamics. Now, once you get into the mid range, they get a little bit thin, not lean, not strident, not, not necessarily neutral, maybe just a, a little less than neutral. I don't know how else to describe it. Um, and, and, and I was able to solve that problem and I'll tell you how in a few minutes. So. The, the good detail in the mid range, but just a little lean, just a thinness to it, not a fullness, not a robustness to the mid range that you can sometimes get. As you move into the upper frequencies, I found that they got a little bit energetic. And I think some of it might be a combination of the headphone itself, but I think that the EF400 amp 
is got a little energy in that upper range. And I don't know if it's the DAC or the amp itself, because the amp is really well constructed. And as a DAC, I had it in the big system, and you saw in the review I did of it, it was really good, really rewarding to listen to. But it did exhibit a little extra energy kind of in the upper mid-range um, and, and into the treble area. How did I fix that? Well, the Sparkos Gemini took care of that. That's got a 12BH7 tube buffer, at least the way I run it, it's got a 12BH7 tube buffer on it. And that really kind of just smoothed things out, added a little warmth and a little body to it. And man, it was rewarding. Now, it was rewarding on the, the EF400, no question about it. But that tube sound, it added a little bit of warmth. Some planar magnetics can be just a little bit, kind of light, thin, sort of not robust. The two brought it right back in, and these became a, a joy to listen to. Um, so really high marks for the Sundara. Obviously, a lot of people love it. Um, I found the best combination was that the Himalaya Ladder Deck and the EF400 and the Sparkos Gemini headphone amp. Beautiful, well done. So compared to other planar magnetics, I've done the Hi-Fi Men uh, EF or HE400 SE, HE400 SE. That is obviously a less expensive, um, it's not quite as resolving. It's not quite as dynamic as these. These do a much better job than that. But it was a good headphone for the money. And I think at $299, these become a, a real compelling consideration if you're looking for an um, open back planar magnetic headphone. I also have recently, and you may have seen or may not have seen it yet, but I have in the FIO FT500, which is their top of the line headphone at about $450. They're very comparable. I think the FIO is a little bit more agile and a little bit more refined, but it's minute. At, but at $299, these become really compelling. So anyway, the Hyphamin Sendaro, I really enjoyed it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you'd be willing to give me a like and a subscribe. And if you wish to support the channel, you can. There's a thank you button at the bottom of the video window. There will also be a membership link in the pinned comment and in the video description, as well as affiliate links for these from Amazon. If you're considering a pair, that's a great way to support the channel. I appreciate that. There are also other affiliate links in the video description. There, my playlists are there. That's a bit of an under construction thing. So I apologize. I haven't been updating them as frequently as I should. Just finding the time to do it. Also, too, please comment. Let me know what you think. Um, check out the community post. There's a great playlist there. What kind of headphones do you like? What kind of sound do you like with your headphones? Are you a closed back dynamic or an open back dynamic? Are you a closed back um, planar magnetic? And I have the Sundara closed backs here. That review will be coming soon. Or you like open back planar magnetics? Let me know what you feel, how you feel about that. Um, and I think that's everything. I can't think of anything else I need to add. Highly recommended. At $299, current price in November of 2024, steel. I think it's a great value. That's that. I'm Ed Holman. This is the Old Guy Hi-Fi channel. It's now your opportunity to put on a good pair of headphones, sit back and listen to some music you really enjoy, and just enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much for your time. I'm grateful for it. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks.